Hello everyone, today we've got another War and Order video. Today we are going to be looking at Infinite Wars. That is the strategy game within the strategy game in War and Order. So this video is going to show you how to get the highest score possible. Now obviously you know um, to get your stats up uh, for each of the towers you need to do certain things. So for example the beast power that affects the spell towers. Um, your building affects something else, artifact affects something else, um, and unfortunately troop power doesn't affect anything, and that's what you usually put all your power into, um, and building power of course is the other one. Anyway, th today we're going to be looking at a strategy that involves only the spell towers. So I'll show you the placement of the spell towers, I'll show you the placement of the ice towers which we're going to use to slow down the enemy, and what is on screen right now is the combat center. So I didn't even know about this when I first started playing the game, but the leftmost button on the infinite war screen is the combat center, and here you can buy buffs to enter the mode with. So it's important to remember that when you enter the mode, you get a common, an uncommon, a rare, and a legendary buff that you can apply to your game. One of each of those. So you see here, I'm about to buy the legendary Freeze Ground, and that's the only legendary I've seen so far, I think. So I'm just going to get that so I have at least one legendary. Everything else is going to be um, more targeted. So you want to target mostly resource rates. That's the 12% resource rate is a purple one. Um, if you can't get resource rates, then the next best is probably reward bonus, um, followed by damage, followed by the health for your base. So you don't need much health from these buffs. You might get them from the the round rewards. Uh, so that's going to be one of the last ones that you're going to focus. But like I said, the first thing that you want to put in is your resource rates. Then you, then you get a bit of freedom. Do you want more resource? Do you want damage? Do you want uh, your rewards up? I like to get the rewards up so I have more options so I never have a bad option. Sometimes it still happens, but it's a lot rarer than before. And then I like my common to be health, if I don't have anything else that I really want. Health is going to give you that little bit extra, so if you are struggling, it's going to uh, keep you alive just that little bit longer. And especially in the later stages, that health is really going to come in handy. Maybe not 10 health, but every little helps essentially. So do not panic about spending gems on this. You only need to do it once per week. And then every other day you can look through and find the best uh, buffs without having to do the refresh like I'm doing here. I'm just doing it for the video to show you my types of selections. So the big thing with this, so anyway, the reason that you're spending so much on the first day of the week is because every other day you can select the auto battle. Now, you're not going to get as much coins as you would have got if you manually battled it and got the same score, but you don't need to spend those buffs every other day. You only need to do the auto battle and then it will give you a percent of the very first battle that you did in the week. So that's one day of real actual battle and invest in gems and whatnot into buffs and trying to get the most perfect run that you can and then every other day is going to be auto battle so i'm just going to wait for this loading screen and we're right in the game and i had a really poor connection when doing this so there's going to be a few loading screens which i'm going to skip but i will just edit those out so you see here we're starting with a thousand resource and we've got 12% increase and the enemies are coming from the top left. You do not want to start from the top left. You are allowed to restart your game as long as you are before wave three. Now, usually if you're playing up to wave three, you probably won't restart. It, it kind of depends on the rewards. If, the, if you really want to, you should restart so you get the best round rewards, but you don't have to. Um, so I'm just gonna keep restarting until I get the enemy starting in the top right, like right now. So there's a few paths that can go, the start is always the top left or the top right. After that you've got them coming from the right, uh, top, the, the next top right or the bottom right. The next top right is the best one, followed by the top left, uh, second top left and then the top top left. Um, that's pretty much your best one, you want the two bottom ones to come last. The worst one is the 
bottom left one. If you get that in the first three, just restart your game. It's not worth playing because that one will kill you very early because there's not a lot of time between the gate where the enemies come out of and the gate where they go into. So start off by placing a bunch of spell towers. Your bottom center um, area is going to be completely spell towers, so that's a safe place to start if you're like in a rush and you don't know what to build. Um, build all your spell towers there, and then you're going to be placing your ice down. So I'm going to start by only uh, placing the level one ices, just so that you get an idea of where they're going to be placed. So we got the one closest to our gate, then we've got the one closest to the bottom right gate, then we've got the very center um, to the right, and we've got that one in the top right and then we've got the very top center now we're going to fill out the left side later on in the game so take note when i do place those but for now we are going to take more damage to our spell towers and we're going to keep placing our spell towers now something to bear in mind with the spell towers is level two of spell towers gives you enough range to go from so you see that center area the spell towers that, like the one i just placed right now in the center they are able to reach the very left lane and the very right lane if you upgrade them to level two so that's why i always start with i upgrade these ones to level two like i'm doing right now before i upgrade any of the corner ones the corner ones they don't need to be upgraded until later into the game so again we've got another damage that seems to be the best option here and we're just going to keep upgrading these corner ones and like i said i'm going to be placing more ice towers later on um, but right now we can see we got lucky so all the enemies are coming from the right hand side so we don't need to do anything else just yet and just as you get the gold or gems rather you just upgrade your center ones and place whatever more you can you shouldn't be in any danger at this stage it's going to be quite a while before you're in any danger so i got very lucky there we got 12 percent. so now we've got 24 percent resource increase which is great And we see here the enemies are now going to spawn from the bottom right. That's not ideal. It would have been better if they spawned from the top left. But um, it's not the worst because it's a, you see there it's the ice golems that are coming out. And they're pretty easy for the spell towers to destroy because it's single target. So now you see I'm upgrading all my ice towers. I put them all straight to level 3. And that covers pretty much all the gaps that we're going to be having. Um, I think I do upgrade one of them to level 4 later on. Um, one that you probably won't see the value of, uh, as in like right away, but is going to be very important later on, is that one in the bottom left, uh, just a little bit up from the bottom left. You want to make sure that's level 3, because that covers that final little path into your gate, and that little path can be the difference between winning and losing. Of course, any gap is the difference between winning or losing. So you see here, the spell towers are having absolutely no problem. And we kind of keep this pattern up. So you see now I'm upgrading the center towers and then upgrading the outer towers. So as my center towers go up to level three, my corner towers go up to level two. got a big burst of resources there so I even got ones up to level four and these bottom ones are a surefire one like these should be the first ones that you're upgrading to max in the bottom center area because these are pretty much always going to be um, engaging and even those ones that come from the bottom left and the bottom right they are going to be engaged by this big center mass that you've got here now I do forget to upgrade a few things here and there and this so you see that uh, left one in the center i forgot to upgrade that but i will get to it later so i upgrade this spell tower uh, ice tower to level four so it covers the exit of the left um gate but again we've got lucky we haven't got to face that yet but we will later on so we need to start preparing for that so those are pretty much all abilities and then one resource rate but it was a common so we're not really going to um, get that or an uncommon rather so we're getting to the point where we can still fill out some of our spaces I made a mistake there a nice tower needs to go there but no problem because we are not stressed about the left hand side the left hand side is very easy because we got as I said we got lucky we got the very top left so we don't need to worry about the left hand side much I'm just filling these gaps before I forget about it and there we go I fixed the ice tower here And we're going to upgrade this as well 
as soon as we get the resources. Now make sure to manage your time speeds. Um, you'll notice that I change it throughout this entire video. Uh, the first five waves you can probably play with times four, no problem. Um, as long as you place those spell towers in the bottom center and get your ice towers down, you shouldn't be stressed up until wave five. Wave seven onwards is where it can get a bit hectic, so I like to turn the speed down while I'm doing my upgrading. It one helps my phone out because my phone lags a lot with this game mode, um, but it also lets me um, not make panic presses, so I'm not like panicked on where I'm meant to spend. So you see now my corners are level two, or all level two, and then my um, centers are all level four so i'm going to be upgrading my corners next to level three and then i'm going to get some level uh five like right there centers and now the reason i get these bottom ones is because again they cover a bigger area i've just noticed that this one wasn't upgraded so i'm going to get that upgraded now and get all these to level three so you see here i had to spend my freeze i don't think i actually had to spend it i think if anything one dragon would have got through but i got a bit panicky i didn't want to ruin the video because i was sure this was going to be a good run and of course we're already past wave three so there's no going back And now we're just keeping up this pattern so we're not going to be touching our ice towers again um maybe that one in the very top we're going to upgrade once more but all the others they cover all their areas now we're just focused on getting as much damage as possible from these spell towers and getting the most efficient upgrades so we're going to be getting upgrades that cover bigger areas upgrades that do more damage and uh, high volume areas like um the, the, the ones that you're going to have to worry about um, other than the gates in the bottom left and the bottom right are the big uh, large HP um, enemies like the dragons that come from the very top and the spell towers are fantastic at doing this because they always prioritize the strongest enemy and they pierce through it because it's piercing damage. So I I decided I've wanted to get a level 6 to see how that would go out. I normally don't do up to level 6, but I felt really good about this run, so I felt like I could spend the extra 1000 and not uh, feel too bad about it. Um, so I got the level 6 just to see how much of a difference it made, and it actually did make a great difference. You see there the, the uh, dragon it was aiming for got taken out flat first, and I was about to spend that, but I realised, nope, we are doing great. We do not need to do that just yet. We did lose 4 HP there, but that's not a problem. Now if I was to change anything about this run, I would probably pay more attention to the ones that were low um, level and get those up faster, but it's not that big of a difference. But the main thing I would change is my uh, common item, that was a 10 HP um, upgrade, I would have probably got even the 3% resource rate, that would have been such a big difference. For a game that goes on this long, that 3% is huge. So you see here, now we've got the bottom left. Now it's time to worry. We need to upgrade all these ones in this row because that's going to be the thing that kills us. So now it's only a matter of time before we die, thanks to this. But this was always going to happen. Um, so we're just going to keep upgrading. And keep getting ready for the bigger waves that come out of this gate. All the other ones we're not too worried about, I know they're going to be doing enough damage. I will upgrade the center um, spell towers in the top later on, um, but that's just to feel a little bit extra secure. I'm not really worried about those waves coming from the top anymore, it's just this gate here that I'm worried about, but early on we're able to take care of it pretty well because we've already got level 6 right here we've got a uh, level 5 and level 4 and then of course all the other ones can pretty much reach once they're done with the enemies on the right hand side if the left hand side get a bit too close to our gate the main worry with spell towers is because they target the strongest enemy it's possible for like a big dragon with a lot of HP to come through here with a lot of minions surrounding it and your spell towers are just going to ignore those minions until that dragon is destroyed and that is the pretty much the lose for um 
the spell tower strategy. That's the only way that you can really lose if your towers are spending too much time on a main target. So it's important to get that damage up. So you see here they spent quite a long time clearing out the big targets and now it's time to clear out the mobs. But just as we're starting to clear out the mobs, this big um, frost giant comes through and we lose the targets. So we're not taking out those ones which are about to lose us some HP. Instead, we were taking out that big golem. So we lost some HP there. And now we're able to clear out mobs again. So we lost about 9 HP from this run. This round, even. And I don't think we're going to lose any more. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. I'm just going to let the video play out. Um, I die in a much later round. This is the best score that I've got so far. So I'm very happy that I recorded it uh, to be able to upload it here so I can show you my strategy. And again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a, a happy holidays. It's New Year's Eve tomorrow. So I hope you all have a wonderful New Year's. I hope to see you in future War and Order videos. Thank you so much for watching.